A very warm welcome to the first film in our Floors and Ceilings series, in which we examine the key characteristics of floors and ceilings. Floors and ceilings play a fundamental role in the creation of space. They form the tops and bottoms of interior spaces. If you think back to our Elements of Architecture film series, you will remember that, unlike roofs and foundation slabs, which represent the top and bottom elements of a building, floors and ceilings are not part of the building shell. They do form part of the load-bearing structure of a building, however. They absorb loads and transfer them horizontally to elements such as walls and supporting columns, which then transmit the loads vertically. Floors and ceilings also provide sound insulation by limiting the transmission of sound from one floor to another. In our Saxony State Music School, in the Blazowitz district of Dresden, for example, we needed to limit the transmission of sound between the individual accommodation floors as well as between living and sleeping spaces. The vast majority of floors take human traffic. As a result, they need to provide suitable surfaces on which people can move about safely. This characteristic is sometimes referred to as the slip resistance of a floor or floor surface. Another key requirement is a floor's resistance to damage and wear. Think of the demands made on the floor coverings in the busy corridors of a university, for example. Conversely, in protective spaces like this detention cell in our Chemnitz police station, resistance to damage and even destruction also plays a very important role. After all, the idea is that no one should be able to break out. When we looked at walls earlier in the series, we explained the role they play in making interior spaces feel comfortable. The same applies to floors and ceilings. So-called heavy constructions, generally built of concrete, are able to store and subsequently release heat and cold. By contrast, lightweight ceilings and floors, such as those made of wood, do not have this property. Indeed, when heavy construction ceilings and floors are clad in a lightweight material, they actually lose their ability to absorb and release heat or cold, and so to influence room comfort. Floors and ceilings have one more essential and very obvious characteristic. They must be able to accommodate openings for the installation of vertical circulation elements that make it possible for people to pass through them from one building story to another. One simple example would be an opening in a floor or ceiling for a flight of stairs. Like all architectural elements, floors and ceilings should also be attractive. The way their surfaces are designed will determine the feel of a space depending on the material, colour, reflectivity and surface structure chosen. This photograph of our Provost Church in Leipzig shows how important the structure of a ceiling can be in determining the feel of a space. Summary. Floors and ceilings form part of the load-bearing structure of a building. They absorb loads and transfer them horizontally to elements such as walls and other supports. Floors and ceilings need to fulfill a number of different functions. They should be wear-resistant, slip-resistant and able to accommodate openings as well as being attractive. Floors and ceilings also play an important role in sound insulation and in creating the feel of interior spaces. Our Floors and Ceilings series continues with film number two. In it, we look at the role floors and ceilings play in load-bearing.